What is going down? Today is another back day. If you couldn't read the title, thought I would just help you out for the illiterate bunch of you. Uh, But I know that the last video I made was also a back video. Whoa, not today, bud. Uh, But, sorry about that. There's a reason for that. And one of the days I went to record and my mic was dead. And then the day I was supposed to record, I got to confess, it was a leg day. And I just, it was one of those days where I just had to go in and play music. And when I record these videos, because I do it on my phone, I can't listen to music and record at the same time. So it's record a video or a workout and I was feeling a really nasty leg day but I needed I needed music I'm sure y'all understand Um, but someday someday we will afford a better setup Uh, you guys are I don't know I normally I wouldn't like to wear sunglasses while I'm making these videos so you guys can see my beautiful eyes. But I don't want to damage my eyes and get blinded and crash. That would be a very sad way to go. So I think we'll stick with the shades for now. I'm sure you all can understand. But anyway, back to what's at topic here, which is back. Okay, so last time we did some barbell rows And they felt really good. And I think I'm going to try them again. But I might not do three sets. I'm going to see how my bicep is feeling. Like I said, it's been... I have this weird pain. I don't know how to describe it. But it's multiplied considerably um, on specific movements. And I I was feeling it a little bit. Uh, on the rows last week. So we'll see if the bicep is feeling any better. If not, I'll probably go back to T-bar rows, which are kind of my bread and butter. I just get a really good connection. I think it's because the the handles are at an angle and I can just kind of sink my elbows into that lat pocket. Uh, And... After that, it'll just be kind of more of the same, like pull downs, pull overs. Maybe, maybe I'll try dumbbell rows actually at the beginning. I typically don't do those, but I've been trying to get more into single leg or single leg, single limb movements. So like one arm at a time. Uh, one leg at a time and and that was the other thing too on leg day I wanted to go really hard and I also wanted to experiment and setting up the camera while experimenting and doing all that just didn't sound like a good time just gotta gotta be honest Uh, that's you know sometimes some days I just feel like going into the gym and tearing shit up, you know? Uh, but I th- after today, I should be on a more consistent uploading schedule uh, to get to get this quality content out there. Uh, but yeah, really just going to try to push it, get some blood into the lats. And at this point, I think I'm probably three to four weeks into my mini cut and things are going pretty well Um, I have a harder time cutting weight rather than adding weight on adding weight for me is very easy I can eat a lot of food and stick to the plan but as soon as my calories go down I just become a ravenous beast like I want to eat everything in sight and you know I'm I'm gonna be I'm like 90% on my plan. I I mess up sometimes. Sometimes I see the the cocoa pebbles on top of my 
on top of my fridge and I'm like, ugh, you know, one little bowl won't hurt. Um, but that's, that's something I need to get better at. It used to be a lot worse. I used to not be able to control myself at all. Um, and I just want to say, if you're in that position, like I once was, or kind of still am, that doesn't mean you can't keep improving. It's it's about improving on your weaknesses. Uh, it's easy to look at somebody who doesn't have that problem and think that they're just made for it and that they don't have any struggles at all. But in reality, where you succeed, that, that might be a, a trouble spot for somebody else. Um, it's not the best word for it, but... You get what I'm saying. Some people have an easier time putting on weight. Uh, some people have an easier time uh, cutting down. It's kind of like, you know, you see guys that just eat whatever they want and they walk around with six packs or dudes that, you know, have never really lifted before and they're just big, like naturally. So we all have strengths and weaknesses and it's all about, you know, keeping your strengths uh, strong and bringing your weaknesses up so that they are not as weak you know, trying to flesh out every every part of the aspect of bodybuilding. Um, and, and that's really what makes it fun, you know. I think a lot of people look at this like, oh, I just can't wait until I'm diced or just a massive, absolute fear-invoking, concrete, cracking, gargantuan, muscle, meat-headed freak, you know, um, it, it's about the improvement along the way, um, looking back at yourself and saying, I improved in all of these aspects and it's about em- enjoying the journey on the way there and not just, not just wishing that you were at the end destination right at the beginning. I think a good way to explain this or simplify it would be if you're going on a road trip and the entire time you're just thinking about like a road trip with your friends okay that that might be a little easier you're going to florida or something i don't know you're just going somewhere right and you're just thinking about the final destination you're just like god i just want to be there and can we just get this trip over with? I hate this trip. This trip sucks. Like I hate being in this car. I'm with my friends, but yeah, I'd rather be at the, the final destination. Whereas the person who's like, you know, the trip there is going to be, whoops, sorry about that. Oh, okay. The trip there if you go at it with the, it's going to be a long, it's going to be a long drive. We're going to be tired. Our legs are going to be cramping. Taking naps is going to be uncomfortable, but it's going to be fun. We're going to be joking with the homies. Just going to be, you know, enjoying the sights and the smells along the way. Enjoying the whole process, taking it all in. When you get to that final destination and you look back through all of the suffering or the trials and tribulations of the matter, it's going to be a lot more enjoyable. And oftentimes when you look back at those trips, you're oftentimes looking back at the memories of going to the final destination rather than the final destination itself. At least that's what it's been like in my experience. So, uh, same thing for lifting. Don't, don't just wish you were, you know, already at the end. Otherwise I think, I think if most people could take a pill and get the results they want immediately. I think a lot of people would be very dissatisfied. Uh, it's kind of like logging into a GTA 5 server and just having your account hacked and you got $100 million in your bank account and now you can buy everything. You don't have to work for, for shit. It's kind of boring, you know? Game loses its interest very fast. And when, you're, when you don't have that, it seems cool, but then when you get it in an instant and you didn't earn it, It's very hollow and empty. So, I don't know. That's just the way I see things. 
I try to enjoy the journey. And also, you know, because the destination is always getting farther. Like, you reach one destination and you and you get there. Now what? Are you done? Are you done progressing, improving? No. I mean, you set the next goal. Gain another 10 pounds. Lose another 10 pounds. Um, go up a speed on the, the cardio machine if you guys do cardio. I don't know. Whatever your goals are. You, you hit a goal, you don't just stop, right? So in a sense, the entire process is the journey. And if you're just dreading it, hanging your head the entire way, you're not going to look back fondly on that. You're going to wish you spent your time doing something else. So that's why you really have to enjoy what it is that you're doing. Um, but yeah, that's just how I, how I see things. But... I think that's all That's all from me for today up until uh, we get to the gym. So I will see you guys at the gym when we are about to hit some back. All right. Here we are, ready to do some barbell rows. And in the car a few minutes ago for you guys, I said that my bicep was still bothering me. Well, I tried this revolutionary new technique called warming up my biceps. Didn't do anything crazy, just a little bit of weight, just pumping up the bicep, getting some blood in there, and it doesn't feel as crunchy, it doesn't feel like tight, like it's just gonna snap off. And I think a lot of people's lifts would improve if you know you hear them say, Oh, my shoulder hurts or my knees hurt every time like they go into a big movement. And you just ask them, Did you warm up? Most of the time the answer is no. Um, you just need to get some blood in there. So you don't have to do anything crazy, like no working sets. I definitely don't feel exhausted by any means, but just getting some blood in there, warming up those troubled areas, that your training is gonna go a lot farther if you spend like five to 10 minutes warming up. You don't have to just jump straight into the workout. And with that, let's do some rows. <clears throat> Now, for me, and I'm sure quite a few of you out there, since I move furniture for a living, or just if you do manual labor in general, you probably have some joints or muscles that are a little bit more sore or tender than others. So if you're one of those people especially, or if you have a sit-down job, you need to warm up. Like, you have to warm up your hips, you gotta warm up your elbows, your knees, especially if you're getting down on the ground a lot. And if you're trying to put on some serious muscle and you wanna do some heavy squats or heavy anything, heavy pressing, you gotta be warm. And that, that's also gonna keep your joints healthy if you wanna be doing this for a long time, which I'm sure people would like to be bigger for longer than a day. Of course, it takes more than a day to get big, but I think you know what I'm saying. So take five to 10 minutes every workout, just warm up. It's not gonna kill you. People aren't gonna look at you and be like, ha, look at that little weakling over there curling 20s on the cable stack. What a loser. Well then after your warm ups and you go curl the 50s or the 60s, whatever it, crazy shit you're gonna do, they're gonna be asking you how you did it and you're gonna tell them, I warmed up so my joints don't feel like garbage. I'm even doing like some bicep curls in between these sets just to make sure that I'm really not putting any extra unintended stress onto my biceps.
guys are getting some premium angles today, so you better be grateful. I want to hear zero complaints. Unfortunately, I don't know if you can see my head or not, so I might be decapitated. But it's no surprise to you, but I decided on the way here that I'm gonna throw triceps into today's lift. Um, you know, after a back day, like back and triceps is just such a great lift. If you haven't tried it, you definitely should. And I've been, harping on this for a while now, but because of my bicep, I've tailored back on direct bicep training for a little while. And I wanna hit some arms because I'm kind of pulling back a little bit so other parts of my body can catch up. Um, but I like to hit them every now and then. Nowhere near gonna do like a full tricep workout, just like six to eight sets, enough to stimulate them and maintain what I grew during the main portion of my bulk through this mini cut. Uh, also, just to enjoy a nice tricep pump. Like who, who wouldn't want that? Yeah, these are feeling good. Screw dumbbell rows. We're not, we're not gonna touch those. We're gonna do one more set here before moving on. <sighs> rows are finished. Let's move on to some pull downs. All right, so we're here at the lat pull down. You can't see it right now, but I'm using the, they're like the mag handles, some different brand, but same thing. I like to turn them a little bit in, so it's kind of like an underhand. That's just what feels most comfortable to me, especially when I'm trying to hit my lower lats. I really feel it like digging in there. So you don't need to do warm ups for every movement. If you wanna do like a feeler set, just to kind of see where your strength is after your first movement, because ideally, for me, I like to push the most amount of weight on my first movement. Um, so sometimes I'm not really sure where my strength is after that, but I have a pretty good idea of where it's at today. So we're just gonna jump straight into the first set and just keep this pump going. <sighs> So I actually sold myself short on the first set. I was a lot stronger than I thought I was. So we bumped up the stack, one pin. And you know, we're just gonna keep the rest going. And as far as rest times go, I typically rest anywhere from 45 to 90 seconds, anything less than that. And you're just really continuing the set you just did. Anything longer than that, you're just wasting time. You're probably on your phone, just dicking around. So what are you doing? Just get straight into it, man. We're not trying to like do a set, hang around like a power lifter, and then just do our next set when we feel like it. We're kind of trying to carry the fatigue through the workout. We want to, you know, emulate the same strength we had on the set before, but in order to keep the pump going, you can't rest as long as you want, otherwise your pump is just gonna go away. Ugh. 
at the final movement for back. And kind of with that last set, I'm just trying to transition from strength-based movements to pump-based movements, I guess. Uh, my brain's not working, but I'm just trying to focus on the stretch and the squeeze and just really getting in the muscle and just pumping it full of blood. And then when we're done with that, we're gonna do some triceps and it's gonna get a little freaky. Since these are single arm, I'm not really resting as long in between sets because while I'm doing my right arm, my left arm is resting. So I only really need to rest 15 or 30 seconds by the time I'm done with my left arm. So we're just gonna get into the second set. <clears throat> Ooh. Oh, these are getting rough. <sighs> That concludes back. I think I'm just gonna like cut back on the commentary a little bit and then just film my sets of triceps before checking out the pump. So I'll see you at some, whatever tricep movement I'm gonna do. I don't know what it is yet, but I'll figure it out. So, so I settled on some push downs. We're gonna keep it simple, nothing too crazy. We might just stay here, honestly. I think I'm just gonna do six sets, call it there, but you know, they could stop feeling good after two or three sets, in which case I'll probably go into some overhead. But we gotta do some sets to see where we are first. Those felt nice. I'm not trying to go heavy on these. That was a set of 20 right there. And honestly, we're just gonna try to get in that 15 to 20 rep range on all of these sets. Just throw that pump. And if you were paying attention to the first few reps of that last set, I kept them slow and controlled to really feel and get inside the muscle. And then towards the end, it was just pump reps, 
maybe not a full range of motion, maybe not locking out all the way, but just engorging the muscle with blood. That's how I like to train. That's what works for me. So that's what I'm going to do. Nothing, nothing too complicated. I, I, I don't see why, like, if it's worked thus far and it keeps working, why, why would I switch it up for no reason? I'm starting to get a little tired, which is what you want at the end of your workout. If, you, if you're like, man, I got like more in the tank. Well, you get your ass back in the gym, bro. You're not done. Like, what are you doing leaving with energy? When you sit down in your car after you get done at the gym, you should let out a big sigh of relief and be like, dude, I just, I just did that. That was crazy. I just went to war with myself and I won. That's how every lift should be. No exceptions. Yeah. All right. That's it. We're done. I'll see you guys in the posing room. All right. We made it in the posing room. I had to move the mic to my beanie because I didn't want it to fall off. Taking off my shirt. So hopefully everything sounds all right. But my back pump might have gone away a little bit. Uh, we gotta add the freak factor. Lower the foot. Oh, that's too much. There we go. That should be good. Uh, my triceps are hella pumped right now. Like, just looking at them like this from the side. Ooh. They're looking good, but let's get a full picture. Whew. Toss that to the side. My triceps are so pumped I can barely flex them. We even have a little a little bicep pump going on. Whew. Walk forward a little bit so you can see. Oh yeah. This is just what you want on a back day. But yeah, the back and tries is really where it's at. I feel like it's almost unbeatable. But yeah, that concludes back and tries for me in this sick, freaky pump. I'm just gonna look at it a little bit longer. Oh, truly magnificent. But I'll see you guys back in the car. All right, that is a wrap on some back and triceps. Honestly, one of my favorite workouts, um, just having that like thickness like in the back and then you have like the tricep hanging down after a big pump and your back pose just look absolutely menacing. Really, it's really unbeatable for me. I mean, back day... Back day for me is just, it's it's really good for like connecting with my body because it's not really a muscle you can look at when you're training it um, compared to other muscles. I mean, sometimes you have machines set up in front of a mirror and you can kind of see like how your chest contracts or how your legs are moving, you know, you can kind of see your form. But with your back, you kind of have to rely on, on feeling. And it took me, honestly, a long time to learn how to connect with my back. Uh, but 
and I'm still learning, you know, it's always, it's always a learning process. I've never felt like I've completely mastered any muscle group. And, and I don't think I'll ever get to that point. Um, I think, you know, always having a student mindset of trying to learn and grow is really what's going to help you progress the most, uh, in the gym. Uh, I would say in certain phases or points of my training, I've definitely become complacent and felt like I didn't have much to learn or anything to improve. And I kind of just would coast. And during those periods, I didn't really make a whole lot of process. Uh, Sorry about the beeping. Um, I got my bag in my passenger seat. But it'll go away in a second. But as soon as I get back into that like mode of seeking out new techniques, new information, talking to people around me, um, my gains just go through the roof. And most importantly, my motivation for training like spikes dramatically. Like kind of almost to the point when I first started lifting, you know, the reason why you're so addicted, like I still go to bed at night, like just thinking about my lifts the next day because I'm applying new techniques or it's a new day to improve and get better at something. And that to me is what keeps me going back to the gym every single day, every single week for years on end is learning something new. And I think most people You know, I've been in the gym for a long time, so, and primarily I go to the same gyms, or I've gone to the same gym for multiple years at a time before switching. So, I see the same people on a regular basis, and not not to put anyone down or anything, but they just don't improve, and I see them doing the same stuff over and over and over again. And if if they're just trying to maintain what they have or they're training for something else, that's, that's cool. But for the lifter that is in a state of perpetual plateaudness, um, you got to try new things. I mean, your body first initially grows like in the, the newbie gains phase, Like for that first 12 months, your body is simply just reacting to the new stimulus of training. So you got to constantly find new stimulus, stimuli, stimuluses. I don't know. Uh, I'm no scientist, clearly. Um, But you got to find new ways to stimulate the muscle. And you're not trying to shock the muscle, like Arnold said, but... You got to find, you got to improve something, some aspect of your training. And it doesn't just have to be more weight. It can be decreasing rest times, more sets, more reps, um, more volume. You can throw in like supersets, drop sets, rest pauses. The, the options are almost limitless, uh, but they, they start and end with you. So as soon as you stop learning, I think that's really when you stop improving. Because if you're not learning, you're not growing. Because uh, you constantly have to be learning new things. And I'm, I'm learning new things all the time. Constantly, you know, learning from people that are better than me. Keeping an open mindset. Never think that I know everything. I've never once thought that the way I've trained is the best way to train. And whenever somebody comes at me or, you know, is a big prominent figure out there that likes to claim that whatever method of training that they're promoting is the only way to improve. That's just BS, like straight up BS. On paper, it might be the most optimal, but everybody's different. So everybody's going to require some kind of nuance in their training. And there's a lot of big people on this planet and I guarantee you very few of them did the exact same thing to get big. And a lot of it comes down to experimentation. You know, people, people come up to me and John, what did you do for this? What did you do for that? Honestly, like 
there's no concrete answer. I can point to some things that I liked doing that I did for a long time, but your results are an accumulation of everything you've done over time. Like this is me figuring out what works for my body. Only, only I can f- truly figure that out. So you can take what you see from me or anyone else that you're watching and apply it to your training. And if it works, great. And if it doesn't, that's fine. You just go back to what worked for you before, but that doesn't mean whatever somebody else is doing is bogus information or it's just not true or it doesn't work. Maybe it just doesn't work for you. So take what you will with that. Uh, I have to run a couple of errands to fuel this machine of mine. And yeah, I should, uh, I should be seeing you guys for another workout here soon. So I thank you guys for making it this far and I will see you when I see you.